Hi, Carol Taylor Carney here at Palaine Arts, and I'm with Jonathan Greenberg, and we're sitting in front of his two incredible pieces for Palaine Arts Paperworks show. Jonathan's going to introduce us to this work. Well, uh, this work was originally inspired by a Polish folk art called Vicinanti paper cutting, <laughs> and it's very stylized, very symmetrical, mm -hmm. and. At some point, the symmetry got limiting for me, and I decided to break away from it. Mm -hmm. And they became very graphic images made out of cut paper. Mm -hmm. This picture here is called Ravens and Foxglove. And the technique, aside from the fact that it's not symmetrical, is the same as for any paper cut, mm -hmm. or any paper cut inspired by this Polish art form. The, the uh, supporting uh, support, the supporting layer is cut out of black paper, and that has to be able to support everything that's, that it's attached to. Once I have the uh, black paper cut out, and it is underneath everything here, all the color is, uh, if you look carefully, you'll see black coming through. Uh, once I have the black uh, layer finished, then I'll switch to my colored paper and add the colored papers on top of it. In this one, the, the fox glove, I also used uh, white out to get the um, area inside of the bell-shaped flower and also watercolor to do simple shading. Uh, this picture is fired by a, a autumn hiking trip I took years ago with a friend uh, on the West Rim Trail of the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania near Wellsboro. Gotcha. And the sound of oak trees was ever present and, and there was just like this echo that was constantly with us. Mm -hmm. And when I did this painting, which is probably 10 years after the hike, the reason I was doing it was I could not sustain the amount of time required to do paper cutting because my wife was ill and I was, I was a caretaker. And um, so I needed some more instant gratification. Yeah, and like still a way to express yourself. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so... Uh, what medium I, is that on the paper? That's acrylic gouache. Okay. And I like it because the acrylic gouache seals because of the acrylic nature, the acrylic mm -hmm. aspect. So it doesn't interact with the layer below. Visually it does, but it doesn't, it doesn't reactivate it okay. the way gouache does. And um, a friend of mine, uh, I don't have very many artist friends, but I have a, have a couple. And we always, I always joke about my, my, my painting with him because he was looking at it, I, I go and I painted every I painted every leaf individually, <laughs> <laughs> and, this, and so I'm kind of being sarcastic and ironic, and, and uh, he goes, "Yeah, I can't believe it either." So what's uh, so funny is it makes so much sense when compared to how the process for the paper worked, where yes. you have to cut every yeah. piece. So you you didn't cut every piece; you painted every leaf. Yeah, yeah. and I think I think I think. The primary reason that I do that is because the image is out of my head and I'm piecing it together. If I was looking at this at the, at the actual scene, yeah. I wouldn't do that. But yeah. because I'm not, this is just the way I do it. And uh, but by doing that, you tie it into the folk art tradition yes, too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's a it's a lovely image. Oh, and also, my background is as a screen printer, so yeah. I, I I did a lot of screen printing, and this this. Print wants to become this image wants to become a screen. Yeah, print. I worked in a screen printing shop all through college. But um, I gave up my screen printing studio. We used to we used to own a triplex in Phil in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. When we moved to New Jersey, when I started teaching in Collingswood, mm -hmm. I, I it was too far, and I realized I could I could teach and make art, mm -hmm. or I could make art and print art, mm -hmm. but I couldn't teach. And make art and print art. Yeah. So I just said, okay, the screen printing is over, even yeah. though I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. I can understand that. Um, I one of the things I'm going to start talking about these from an analytical standpoint a little bit because uh, your compositions in them are so strong. This one, of course, reminds me of an Andrew Wyatt 
course, he, he didn't have anything to stand to pull as a bird. He had a man sitting up in the in a tree looking down. It's called Hunter's something or other. And um, and so this idea of the aerial view, you know, Degas and his aer aerial views, yes. and uh, it, it takes people out of, we all know what it's like to trip through the woods, yeah. but then to get that aerial view. And yeah. is well, because that, there's is a- that guy you? That's me. Yay. And, and <laughs> the guy behind it, the bald guy is, is the guy I hiked with. And when he looked at it, he said to me, he said, how come I'm not in front? <laughs> <laughs> Do you tell them it's your painting? You'll do it That's how you exactly want. Exactly what I said. Okay. <laughs> but it's also interesting yeah. because you're then you're observing this. You're yeah. like it, it's a perspective we don't always think of, like in art, because a lot yeah. of times people enter from the bottom and they want you grounded. And as you enter, but this is clearly like you're observing what's happening, and actually, probably your conversation partner is that woodpecker right in the front. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember why I did it, but it, it, I like it. But it, it just, yeah. it's just a kind of a, a twist. That, yes, that, so. that's it. It's just a, it's a, a twist. Yeah, it's a fascinating twist. Yeah. It's, you know, I love stuff that fits into art history. Yeah. and um, so you know, to to be an artist, we know what's come before us, and we're trying to tweak it a little bit yeah. for what comes after us. And but so there's, it's a really great innovation on something. Artists always do paintings from their walking or kayaking or activity. Yeah. But I also think that this is interesting that you said that it's from a memory because yeah. the thing is, is that, our, and we were talking a little bit about this yesterday, memories uh, are not just visual, they're about scent and sound and the yes. story we tell ourselves. Yes. And so this is very narrative as well. And yes. the like brilliant colors also link to like the vibrance of memories. Like memories are both... Like, it's funny the details you remember in memories versus um, the details that you observe in life. And those things always become so vivid. Like, for instance, uh, this painting has very strong reds and yellows, which if this was autumn that and or winter, that totally makes sense. Yes. But even based on reds and yellows, and this is nice with the folk tradition too, all of us know, like, it's a very, it's a touchstone for, I think, all humans that oh, I know that this is fall or winter because I see the reds and yellows and uh, they're a highlight of the piece, even though when you actually walk into the woods, a lot of times you're observing more like brown and earth tones, but you see this and it's exactly how in your head you would you would do the details because... And I'm going to break in because go ahead. I, I, want I, love you, it. I want you to explain then how you go about finding your color composition. Good question. Um, this originally started out as a as a screen print, mm -hmm. and I this was uh, I was taking a, a screen printing class at um, uh, at um, Rowan University, and um, I was experimenting with with half with half tone uh, oh, yeah. emulsions, and. I was having trouble with the, with the registering, so I never I never really was able to finish it. Um, and after the class, I, I just had, had no way of finishing it, but I wasn't happy enough with what I did to even want to finish it. Mm -hmm. it just, it just because, of, because of the registration difficulties, it wasn't worth it to me. So I decided to turn it into a painting. I guess basically, it's pretty much what you said in terms of uh, the kind of archetypal fall colors um, and uh, the woodpeckers, you know, black, black, gray, white, and red, pretty much. Yeah, which is a beautiful, the scarlet and the scarlets really look nice. And the texture of the bark. I actually was very pleased with the way it came out. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the original, in the original image, the, the shapes were, were more diamond-like mm -hmm. for, the, for the bark. And then I just decided that I wanted to get some kind of rudimentary shading in, and because I was painting, it was it was very easy to do, and uh, just the, the combination of the black trees, basically, they're right. a dark a dark shade for the trees, the birds, which would be both dark and light, and would have that bright red, and then the the colors, um, and it, I, and one of the most successful parts of this p painting to me. Is the way the sunlight streaks along the ground. I yeah, yes. I was going to point and, that out. And, I, and that was just like 
It, was a des it wasn't so much a, a desire to have any specific kind of lighting. I needed just some shapes to go through there. And it just, you know, I did. I said, oh, this works. I'm, I, I, like, I like it. And uh, what I find as a painter where I can make all kinds of changes, where with a paper cutting, it's very hard to make changes. I do it all the time, but it's difficult and time consuming. But as a, as a painter, whenever I put something new down, I, I know to wait to see if I like it. Right. Because when I make a when I make a change, it takes it takes a while for me to realize the implications of it from a design point of view and whether it's successful or not. Or I may I might say, oh, this is not successful. It's too busy. Not enough dip, Not enough contrast. Whatever. Um, so I've learned I've learned to be patient. You know, to be patient with my my observing the artwork because it just takes a while it takes a while to either appreciate it or mm -hmm. to say oh this is this has got to go mm -hmm. so yeah. i think that it's really interesting that you like you definitely really think through your design process and things yeah. and because i worked in a screen printing shop i like some of that is like where you have to think about how these colors interact and how one screen goes and then another screen goes. And you have to think about voids of space and then overlay and layering and which things. Which is what I was going which to is, Yeah, which yeah. is really present in both of these. Yeah. Uh, can you kind of talk about how you approach that? Repeat the question. Okay, but basically, so what she's she asking you, yes. basically what she's asking you is both of these are yeah. very strong in having positive and negative space. In this one, the negative space it's the white that goes to the background. Yeah, yeah. In this one, um, the trees and the and the animals themselves make the positive space, and the negative space is filled with pattern. I understand. Okay, this one is a very vertical image, uh, and uh, I wanted to have the bird breaking out of the rectangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, which is lovely. Yes. And agreed. the fox love, which is my, which is probably my favorite flower. It's very, very vertical. Yeah. And so I just needed to, to weave some white into the background. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, like this bird is a strong diagonal, the, the breaking of the tail breaking out, uh, I think makes it more interesting. Uh, yeah, it's a very yeah. vertical painting yeah. with these oh. intercessions yeah. Of diagonals. I almost wanted it to be almost cathedral-like. Yes. Was, yeah. There of... is something about it that is almost like a um, a vaulted window. That was that was part of the initial idea when I came up with this composition. I started out with like an arch, you know, very vertical rectangle mm -hmm. that became an arch, mm -hmm. and I decided that I I decided that I, I didn't need to go that far, and this just kind of worked for me. What I think is interesting is almost like the bird is standing on the, like, just outside the window, and then you're looking through a window at the scene, which is really nice. Yeah. Um... The whole idea of integrating the, the presentation to the actual piece is beautiful and um, makes something very dynamic for people to put in their home, their offices, and appreciate every day. Sometimes... But not often. Sometimes when I finish a piece of artwork, I say, God, I nailed it. I mean, yeah. that's the way I felt in this one. This one was slower, but finally I said, okay, it's working. And I really like this one a lot. But, and I, I like this one as much, but this one I just knew I got it right. This one, it took me a while to, it took me a while to realize that I got it right. Well, you have a lot of values that are the same, and then um, you have whites that just, you know, stand out yeah. and how do you make them come together yeah and then and make the little the, make the scene that you you wanted to make and you did that beautifully yeah the way that they integrate because you have such strong colors and like the lines of this are very strong and yet it the the sharpness of the contrast gives this beautiful depth and you really do feel like you're falling into this in the best possible way. The 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 framing the framing of the, the trees kind of frame the image. Or, yeah. Or they, they really they really make the composition. And um, 
I got it right. I mean, yeah, yeah you did. Well, you know, sometimes, just... it's, well, sometimes it's been so long, it's been a while since I did this. So, it, you know, the, the way I went about it is a little hazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but I remembered I remembered the the especially the the trade in the foreground really for, it really sets the whole sets the whole picture up. Well, yeah. that and um, the pop of color of the red and the yeah. yellow, you know, um, pushes and the side. Um, pushes, you know, scale will come forward, and you have that, and then you, you, it, it's similar kinds of colors on the men, and except that they're in blue, yes. but value-wise, they're very similar, and because of scale, you read them back, you, yeah. you read, this is a, compositionally, both of these pieces are very sophisticated. And uh, I think people who are art appreciators from that standpoint, particularly yes. artists and people who are studying art. And people um, who collect art. You know, are, will go to these pieces and, um, and get a lot out of them every day. Every yeah. day they'll see something new and yeah. something vivacious and, and different. And they're so strong that you, it's a, the kind of piece that you can buy this piece and it will become a focal point of the room you put it in. Yeah. So, which I think is terrific. Which is the next question for you. What? Um, okay, as the artist, yes. where, where do you see um, the, uh, okay, the audience who comes in to look at these? Where do you see them entering each one of these works? Well, you, how, do, how do they, you know, how, what do you want them to engage with? How do you want them to approach them? I want them to like them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little abstract for me. Uh, I'm pretty concrete. Yeah. And um, so, try the question one more time and see if I can come up with an answer. So, so she, this is a, this is a great pairing here yeah. because she's very metaphysical. Yeah. Like, uh, she's very meta. Uh, she's basically asking, like, and I think, you know what? I think the answer, you want people to like them. That's an answer. That's a perfect, that's answer. A perfect answer. But, um, what I was asking you. I want them, no, I want them to, I want them to have a, 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 an epiphany of, of the presence of beauty. Mm. And I, I don't, I don't say that, um, in an arrogant way. I just feel like when I love a piece of artwork. It's because I say, oh my God, this is beautiful. Yeah, and they've that's, captured something that's very relatable yeah, that, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really my, that's, that's my goal in all my art, to make, to reach a level of beauty that um, is elevated. Yeah. That's really why I make art, because... Well, that was, this is a success. So. <laughs> um, when, when, I start, when I started doing art back in, uh, when was like 82, I had this one pit, this one, I think it was oil pastel. And I, when I was younger, I worked on fishing boats um, in, in uh, Southeast Alaska. And- You're an adventurer, Jonathan. And, and there was this one, and I didn't know what I was doing in art. And I did this one scene, totally, totally primitive, but something about the way I used colors, I had like this epiphany of beauty. It was a, tra it was a transcendent experience. And so and, that, and they don't happen that often. You know. And this, I didn't feel that way with this one, but I just knew I got it right. But it's a wonderful feeling when it happens. I think yeah. with both of them, yeah. you know, uh, the person who's lucky enough to see these and see yeah. these every day, they, that's what they're going to get out of it. That every time, you know, they, they walk by them, it's like, oh my, I can't help it. But, but there's the, also the something, scale. there's but something then, about them that when you look at them, they have, like, it's not just that they have clarity, but there's something about looking at them that I think it's funny that you say I'm very direct because there's something like sophisticated and elevated about this, but there's something about these that are very direct in a way that they're, you look at them and they are cleansing to the brain and I feel calm and I just, they're very joyful as well. Yeah. So I, I like these a lot. One last question, tell. one last question, because we want to sell these. Um, where do you think the person who buys each one of these would be best to put them? In their, in their office, in their home? What kind of home? space? Okay. Yeah. Intimate? Really I would say a, a living room would be good. 
we have this one right now hanging in our in our kitchen. It's only because it's an open space kitchen yeah. slash yeah. living room. Um, I believe everyone should have art in their yeah, yeah, we office. do at my house. Office isn't bad. She just bought a piece of art for her kitchen. <laughs> I know a friend bought a, one of these, the, one of the Jaclays, and she put it in her bedroom, which they which they redid. Um, I I like. I think I would go for living rooms because that would be a place where you where you're sitting a lot and mm -hmm. you're looking and you can look at it a lot. Kitchen's not bad either because. It's yeah. You have a chance to to, to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Yeah. Well, with this with the size and scale of this one too, I think you're right with the living room. I think it would also go well in an office, um, particularly a, like an office waiting room or anything like that, because it engages and calms people. But um, it it calls for a big wall. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a, you you're not going to put either one of these. In a small room. In a, in, yeah, in a minimum space. Yeah, we said to another artist yesterday, these are showstoppers. These demand space, like, so that you can both look at them from a distance and then get in close. Yeah. Yeah, so. And this, this one is so tactile. When you, when you get up close and you look at it. Yeah. You go, oh, man. Well, something. while you we know? were preparing for this and uh, everybody was working and I was measuring, I was looking at it. it, it this cannot be said enough. This needs to be, these all need to be seen in person because there are so many details that when you get up close and you can really see the tactile details that take something from, oh, this is, this is pretty to like, this is beautiful, but also the way they've used the materiality is, yeah. is yeah. engaging. Yeah. yeah. They're wondrous. Yeah. So. so come see this wondrous work by Jonathan Greenberg at Palain Arts for a papers work show from June 2nd Did it. to August 7th. You nailed it.